You are listening to episode 41 of the Less Stress, More Fun podcast. Today, we're going to be talking about your relationship with exercise. You are listening to the Less Stress, More Fun podcast. I'm your host, certified coach Lisa Schwaller. Each week, we talk about how you can rise above the stress of modern living so that you can focus your energy on what matters most. All right, let's get started. Hello, my fellow human. Human beings are designed to be in motion. For the entirety of human history, we've migrated to different geographical locations. We celebrate events with dancing or other ritual physical movements. Humans scale mountains and dive into water. Yes, human beings are designed to move. Today, I want to talk about your personal history or relationship with movement. Specifically, I'll be talking about exercise, since a lot of people now need to plan movement into their lives. Human beings weren't sitting around on computers 50 or 100 years ago, much less 1,000 years ago. But here in our modern times, we often decide how and when to bring movement into our lives in order to maintain our bodies, and our health. And for a lot of us, this is an area where we really struggle to create a plan and then execute on that plan. In the podcast show notes, I've included links on how exercise helps manage stress, anxiety, and depression, if you're interested. But today's conversation is going to be more personal than about sharing research. Today, I just want to explore surprising ways that exercise can help you manage stress and have more fun, how you can think about your relationship history, and then we'll set a vision for your future relationship with exercise or movement. There are a lot of physiological reasons that exercise and movement benefit our bodies. It helps regulate our hormones, it keeps our organs in peak shape, and our muscles love to move. I mean, we know all of those facts, most of us. But what's surprising is that there are ways that exercise helps you manage stress that are beyond the physiological. Let's take one example. The most consistent objection I hear about exercise is people saying, I I just don't have time for it. And The flip side to that, when you turn that upside down, when you do schedule and complete your exercise, you've made time for yourself, which is a powerful, powerful way to give yourself more control over your life and your destiny. I would even say that controlling your controllables is a total stress-busting move. When I look over my adult life, there have been times where I've been more consistent than others. But I would say that nowadays, I really have my exercise habit dialed in. And it's not because of planning or finding exercise that works. It's more because of the mindset approach that I've taken to it. As I've developed the habit that's been very consistent for me in the last few years, a lot of it rests on this fundamental decision. I'm the most important person in my life. I mean, without me, I don't have a life, right? And I decided it's not selfish or wrong to give the most important person, in fact, the person that's the my in my life, 20 to 30 minutes a day for physical maintenance. I just decided. And for me, that meant really committing. And part of that decision was deciding that I didn't care if I did my exercise at four in the morning or one in the morning, that if it was on the calendar for that day, it would happen that day no matter what. I treat that appointment with myself like I'm meeting the most important person of my entire life because I am. I mean, think about someone you really admire, someone that you would absolutely clear your calendar for. That person should always be you. This is about our relationship with exercise. And our history with exercise, I am excited to meet the version of me who will be there in one year in my future or five years if I'm gifted with a life that long or longer. 
And I decided no matter what, that that person is the most important person to me and that I could definitely give her 20 to 30 minutes a day. I remember hearing a lot of the advice, do something that you really enjoy. There are things that I prefer. My relationship history was that I would try to like it. And now I've just decided that I'm just going to do it. So um, the exercises that I do are generally 30 to 40 minutes long, and it takes me about halfway into it to think that it's a good idea. Quite honestly, I very, very rarely feel like doing it when I start. For me, the stress-busting part of it is, oh, this is just a decision that I've made. I'll even joke with myself, like, oh, it's time to work out. I don't want to. I know, honey. I know you don't. I know I don't. It alleviated a lot of stress to make a commitment and do it even when I didn't feel like it, like this pressure to feel like it, or maybe someday I'll be the person who wants to work out or feels great while working out. When I took those pressures out of the expectation, my stress level went down and my consistency went up. And you know what's fun? Finishing a workout. Yay, it's done today. Now I can go about the rest of my day. Now let's talk about you, you and your mind, you and your relationship with exercise. How do you tell the story? Notice I didn't ask you what you do or what happened, not the this, then that, but how do you tell the story? When I'm working with clients on their desire to make exercise a regular part of their life, oftentimes they'll tell a story that sounds like this. Oh, I always sabotage myself and it's hard and, you know, I'm busy and I was doing this 5 a.m. boot camp for a while, but then it got cold and I fell off the wagon and, you know, it was so much easier when I was younger, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I always chuckle at that because exercise or any habit you do to maintain your life and build your future self, it's not a wagon ride that you're on or off. It's not a train ride with smooth, consistent rails. It's just a string of decisions. It's here we are today. What are you going to do today? And those decisions string together to form your future. Notice how you tell your story of your history with exercise and let your brain go there without filtering it or censoring. And then go back and take a look at what you wrote down. It can be so informative. The other fun way to approach your relationship with exercise is just to do like a timeline. Start back to when you were a kid, maybe as early as you can can think about. Did you like to move? Were you inhibited in your body? Did you have certain things that you enjoyed doing? Quite honestly, like for for me and other people who've had um, trauma experiences, we can have a very curious relationship with our bodies and movement. There are times I really did not want to call attention to myself. But look at your own timeline. What do you notice about how you thought and felt about movement? play or exercise when you were four years old, then eight years old, then 12 years old. Keep going all the way into the present moment. Again, it's not really putting down the facts of what happened. It's noticing how you talk about it and what feelings come up in your body when you do this exercise. What do you see about yourself when you notice how you talk about your exercise history? and then your relationship with exercise in general. The reason I encourage this retrospective, it's not to dig in the past for treasure. You're not trying to find the time when it worked and then just redo that. It's to notice what your mind offers. Again, this whole podcast isn't about like just setting a plan and executing. It's about what's going on in your mindset that may affect your ability to make a decision and be consistent in living into your intention. And how we talk about our past is very informative. It reveals what you think is possible. It reveals some of your default thinking patterns around exercise and movement and how you see yourself in relationship to those things. Because genuinely and truly, you get to tell the story of your exercise history any way you please. And 
when you look at your past and you say, oh, when I was four, I did this and eight, and then, oh, I started to notice a shift, notice where the thinking shifts. And then ask yourself, how do I want to tell the story of my relationship? You've looked at what you think about it in your past, but look ahead now to the future. That story's not yet written, and you can write any story you like. That can be so much fun. Without p- creating any pressure, without judgment or expectation, dreaming with full possibility about what's possible for you, write down how you would like to describe your exercise relationship three months in the future, one year in the future, 10 years in the future, and beyond. There are no right or wrong answers here. You're just dreaming. This is playtime. No pressure, no expectations. Everything is possible in our imagination. Open up your heart to your desire. What is your future self's relationship with exercise? I'll share mine. I've decided that my best chance of success in this area of my life is to not make it complicated. In fact, the simpler, the better. So here's my vision. Three months from now, I do the exercise that I planned on the calendar unless I'm too sick to get out of bed. I can allow my mind to complain, but I do the exercise at the edge of my best effort. I don't push myself. And then I celebrate every day's accomplishment when I finish my workout, I put a sticker on my exercise tracker. I keep it in the living room where I walk by it constantly. I don't alter the plan with less than 24 hours notice because after all, my dentist asked me to give 24 hours notice if I change an appointment and I can surely extend that same courtesy to myself. That's the vision that I have. In three months from now, if it's on the calendar, I do the workout that day, no matter what, unless I'm too sick to get out of bed and I am allowed to grumble through the whole thing if I want to. That's my choice, but I'm going to do it, and I'm going to give it my best effort that day. When I'm done, I get a sticker. Wee Stickers. And do you know what my plan is for a year, three years, 10 years, and 30 years? Same thing. That's the plan. Until I make a new decision, that's the plan. If I did that, if I exercised when I planned to, if that was my relationship with exercise, I do what I say when I say I'm going to do it. Can you imagine how I would be as an old lady? It's the best chance I have for an independent old age. And can I imagine the kind of person that I would be in relationship with myself? I'd be the person who showed up for exercise that consistently. I mean, it's win, win, win. There's no downside. I have decided that I always have time to take care of my body because it's the only one I get. And I do not need to love exercise. I've decided that I want to do exercise. No pressure, no judgment, no comparison, including to my younger self. It's just me showing up that day. That's the relationship with exercise that I choose for myself. And I'd offer as as an option for you. We can see then that having a really intentional relationship with exercise can be a great way to reduce stress. And it is fun to finish doing something you said when you said you were going to do it. It does bring in a sense of playful possibility. Look at me. I just, I show up and I make it happen. I find that to be very fun. But let's give you your homework for this week and keep the focus on you and your history. So this week, your Coach Lisa homework is to do the exercises in this podcast. Write down the story of your relationship with exercise. Then build that timeline from when you were a young child all the way through today, every three or four years. Think about what if I've been thinking and feeling about moving my body throughout my lifespan and reflect. That is what your brain is used to. That's the story it's used to telling. Then sit down with that information and say, all right, so this is how I talk about it. This is how I think about it. I get to decide what to think on purpose. What do I want to decide is my future relationship with exercise? 
from there, once you decide what you want that relationship to be, the action of living into it, it doesn't become easy, but it becomes very intentional and very clear. Please join the Facebook group if you would like support with this. I post the homework for each episode in there in case you'd like to engage with me or other group members. We'd love to have you there. Thanks for listening. If you're enjoying what you're learning, I'd love to have you as a member of the Less Stress, More Fun community on Facebook. Join me there to continue the conversation from the podcast. Plus, you'll get access to things I share only with community members. I'll talk to you next week.